Hey, this is Frank Thomas from ubotjunkie.com. I uh, really like using the ubot tool. It is a very fast development tool, and as it approaches the uh, very mature and stable 3.3 versions, it's becoming an excellent tool. But there's times that I want to be able to take a project a little bit further and uh, actually create it right in Visual Studio. Well, I came across a wonderful uh, website called uh, Watten and it's been developed by a fellow who lives in the uh, Netherlands, uh, Jürgen, uh, uh, Jürgen, and I, uh, sorry, I can't remember his last name off the top of my head, but he's created this library. It's based upon the the WATIR library, which is a Ruby library, and he ported it over to .NET, so you can actually use it for .NET. The only unfortunate thing about the project is it's really coded for the C Sharp developer not for the Visual Basic developer and it's also falling a little bit behind in its instructions for the latest and greatest when it comes to uh, Visual Studio um, 2010 like you'll see here on the back I'm running Visual Studio 2010 okay and uh, I was very fortunate to get a hold of the actual author and chat with him uh, just the other day and uh, talk to him about the software as well as the fact that I'm using in Visual Basic and the latest version of uh, the Visual Studio 2010 and he was more than glad to uh, get aligned with me and work with me to help me get um, introduced to the package but today the whole purpose of what we're doing today and uh, just so you know that you can see the whole tutorial online on my site there is the web address right there um, the whole reason for this quick video tutorial is to show you how to install it onto Visual Studio 2010 under Visual Basic. Okay, so to start what we will want to do is we will want to ensure that we create a new project within Visual Basic and uh, we create a lib folder underneath the actual folder for the um, for the uh, project and uh, this folder is it's, it's a great technique to use and what you do is you place all your files, your Watton files that come with Watton and these are the four that are important. You will find these files inside the bin folder of Watton. Let me find that for you right now. Okay, so there you see I'm running, this is the latest release version 2.0.20 whatever bin and the files that you want particularly here are the interop, the Microsoft, the Watton Core and the Watton Core XML. Okay. So you're basically going to copy and paste these into this folder. Next, the an important step for you to do is you must right click on each file, click on properties, and unblock the file. Okay? You say okay. And you do it again. Properties. Unblock. And you must do it to all the files that you are using with this library. Okay? If you don't do that, I guarantee you, you're going to lose a little bit here and here is the unblock instruction here. Next you're going to want to add a reference if you've used Visual Studio quite a bit. This is pretty easy. Uh, project add reference. You're going to point to your lib folder inside your actual uh, project and you're going to select the watton.core.dll. Okay. Finally, before you go any further, you will want to, on every page that uh, is part of your project, you want to do the imports for the Watton.core. Okay? Now, if you're running Visual Basic or Windows 7 or Windows XP version 64 bit, not the standard 32 bit, but 64 bit, you must do one more thing. You must right click on your project, select properties it's going to open up your folder with all these different properties. You want to select compile and enter advanced compile options. You must select if by default it'll install and this is what you'll see that right there. It'll be selected as .NET Framework 4 Client Profile. Watton runs under the 32-bit .NET Framework, not the 64-bit it will not function and again you'll be pulling out a lot of hair you must ensure that you went from the client profile just to the standard .NET Framework 4 and there you go you are ready to go 
and uh, you can start creating a project. Make sure you put the imports above your main class form, your main public class for your form if you're opening using a uh, just a form or a window to create a project. Um, but that's what you want to have. The imports Watton.core. So there you have it. If you are looking for more tutorials on on uh, Ubot and or Watton, come on over to Ubot Junkie. I will put up more tutorials as time goes on. Uh, more as a learning post for me so I don't forget stuff as well as maybe it'll be handy for you. Thanks very much. This is Frank Thomas from www.ubotjunkie.com